Uh, yeah, so thanks, Greg. Yeah, and, and this was a, absolutely a, a very kind of like life-changing project for us. And also, I don't know if you guys have dealt with power apps on production, like true, true production being used out there on the front line. Uh, it could be pretty tricky, right? And we got to manage that. So all of that was a challenge that was given to us uh, a few weeks ago. So like I talked about, uh, we had one shot. There's a couple other things that we had against us. Is that, have you guys, uh, has anybody in here dealt with GCC or Government Cloud? Uh, it's a Crickets. challenge, <laughs> right? It's pretty ridiculous, some of the things that we have to do, right? And the second thing is that we had security concerns. So in other words, we got to make sure that this application could not be uh, vulnerable when we're talking between uh, the application or the Canvas apps or the, the model-driven apps over to CDS. So we actually had to come in with a, a two-step basically communication process in order to make sure that if it was hacked or whatever, we had a way to stop or minimize the exposure. The third item was that uh, if you get an email that you're going to get scheduled for, for uh, a test or something like that, you want to make sure that it's correct, right? So if you get a, an email to get, for example, hey, you need to get tested for at this center or at this time, we got to make sure that it's not only right, that you have all the right information, and also the Power App itself can handle all the patient uh, details. So when they show up, they actually have the right information there. So this is how it looks like, right? The patient flow, we made it small. It's, it's, I know that you guys can maybe not read all the details, but really on the very left-hand side is the very start of the process. And then as soon as the, the provider really loads the data, so all of us can actually reach out to our providers and be able to say, okay, my name is Lucas Diaz. I would like to be tested for antibodies for COVID-19. And they upload a file and then the rest gets taken care of by this Power App. So the, inter the interesting part is uh, what did we do? Um, when we create Power Apps, we, things are so easy that it's very, uh, very fast. You can get really complex or you can create things that you really don't need. So what we did is says, screw it. Before anybody touch a single entity, what we're going to do is actually create a, a, like a map or a process map in which things are going to go. And any one of the records have to in a, uh, reach an end state in order for us to be able to code this application. So what we did is we actually just laid it out in a big piece of paper. This is late night and a couple of beers too, maybe. And we literally hashed it out. And so each one of the end states will be taken up by a different portion of the Power App itself. Uh, there's some other areas, like for example, the one in red here is like an end state that would be a future uh, feature. But nevertheless, we had a combination of uh, Power Platform or um, Power Automate, Canvas, and model-driven apps there. So let's take a look at what it kind of looks like. So another thing actually I forgot to mention is that we also use the Power Platform, Power Portals, right? So we were able to um, provide an, an entry point for the data for the COVID-19 uh, appointment uh, tracking. So uh, Cuomo and the NYS actually requested everybody that could to go and do a self-assessment. Based on that assessment, actually, if you go to, I believe it's nys.gov, it, you can actually get an assessment in which you're able to know whether you should go for, for testing or you should reach to your provider or not. Once the provider has loaded your information, we created a power portal uh, to be able to have that communication back and forth and enter the data into the system. Once we had that, we actually created a new or, or actually enhanced the, the contact entity to really be able to, to really have it as an individual. Right. And from the individual perspective, we extended what are the number of hours uh, work per week? Have you been exposed? What facility do you have? What symptoms are you getting? So if you guys see on the right hand side, um, basically what what is constituting that is allowing them to or they need to be tested? Right. So patient status, where they are. And so we created a, a model driven out for each step on the process. Other two things that we created, we created two Canvas apps, one of them from the provider perspective to be able to submit or scan an individual and submit them uh, into the application. And the second one is when they came over, uh, somebody showed up to a center. We actually had used um, the uh, barcode scanner in order to be able to um, basically read their appointment 
and be able to get data and also get a specimen from that uh, person coming in. It was incredible because this app was completed from conception to testing to production in three days. Uh, actually, there's two of them. So we actually had to divide and conquer to get it uh, working properly. How many, con how many consultants did you have working full time on that? I imagine everybody was full time, right? More than full time. <laughs> so uh, I, I, we had about, I would say, 30. Uh, wow. At the same time, because of the GCC, the Canvas apps, so we had the testing team, the consulting team, the power flow team, deployment team, and uh, us, the design and architecture team, right? So all of us had to work together. And also there's the RSO and the product team of Microsoft. Wow. So we wow. all came together within this amount of time. Okay. So this is really great because all what you're seeing here in those power apps that we created, the Canvas apps, is really just taking one entity and expanding it. Uh, so in a minute, we're going to go into the RSO component of it and also showing you guys how awesome it is to be able to use this for pretty much anything that you want. A, meaning you can be scheduling um, medical devices, you can be scheduling taxi cabs, you can be scheduling whatever you want. But really, we leverage the, the power of the power platform to make this happen. By the way, if you guys have any questions as well, I know everybody's having a couple of drinks, so feel free. Uh, we can share as much information as we can here without going into the, the NDA. Ping the chat and uh, we'll be happy to pause Lucas uh, wherever he's at and yeah, or even go off mute if you're feeling brazen. Yeah, awesome. So we talked a little bit about somebody getting uh, a scheduled or we had actually this, this contact entity that we expanded. So what we did is we actually uh, took it into RSO. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit. We're gonna actually pop the hood into an RSO instance um, and be able to see how this was linked. But in the end of the day, what RSO does, or what we did as part of this application is creating uh, resource requirements. Resource requirements is the number, is the entity that RSO basically takes into consideration for creating bookable resource bookings. And what that is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with field service, but uh, really that's what we do in order to schedule work quarters and resources or when you go out to the field and whatnot. Uh, really, it's a resource booking. So keep in mind, this is all out of the box. And what we did is we set up capacities according to each one of the centers. So in this case, if you count it, it's nine. Uh, well, uh, some of the, the centers, there was nine that they can take nine people at once and they all had half an hour intervals in which uh, they could be scheduled. So in this case, if you guys are familiar with the resources side, there's a working hours um, capability in there and capacity. So you can determine how many uh, appointments could be taken or um, uh, resource bookings you can actually have for a resource. Are you guys familiar with the schedule board? On we'll resource scheduling or URS? Ah, all right, awesome. So in URS, it, what we can do is actually have any entity within D365 and make it available for scheduling. So you can pick uh, resources, you can pick, uh, for example, I don't know, chairs, coffee shops, uh, wine bottles, whatever you want to do. You could actually, any entity that you want to create or any entity that already exists, you can actually make it available for scheduling which is super duper cool. So you can imagine the number of scenarios that you can do as, as part of the power platform that you can use for this. So Lucas, we had a general question um, about, did you start by creating a data model or did you, have, did you have a base model to start with? Yes, so that's a great question. So I'm gonna back up a little bit here is that we knew that we wanted to use as many standard uh, entities as possible. Right, so the contact entity was everybody that we're gonna schedule is a contact, AKA a person, AKA somebody we know that we needed some more information for them. So we use the contact entity, the resource entity as to where they're gonna be scheduled, like the hospital. And I think we leverage a couple of few supporting entities, but the, our data model was very super duper mega simple. Smart. Awesome. It's good to do it. Yeah, yeah, so keep in mind, guys, this is strictly out of the box, not a whole lot of code. Um, in the portal side, there's a little bit. We also incorporated Twilio as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys have 
uh, heard of Twilio before, What's but Twilio? it's being able to communicate via SMS. So SMS uh, confirmation. So if you're able to uh, say yes or no, I want to come in or being able to um, uh, take in those responses via text, basically. Let's talk a little bit about RSO. So uh, before I kind of get into, um, this is my demo org that we have set up here. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that in RSO itself, I'm able to go ahead and set up different entities. There's some that kind of come in uh, out of the box when you install RSO, but being able to set up new relationships and be able to have, uh, for example, in this case, we pick contact for, for antibody and being able to say, okay, what is the legal entity uh, or the entity logical name? And what do we want to make this requirement is and whether we want to have RSO pick it up. So once you install RSO, it adds a set of uh, new, new fields or modifies the entities as well to basically say, does RSO need to pick this up? So in here, the great part, remember me talking about URS, uh, Universal Resource Scheduling, right? With RSO, you can actually add any entity that you want as part of D365 to being able to pick it up with uh, RSO. It's pretty freaking awesome. Including custom entities. Yes, yeah, that is absolutely true. So there's a couple of things is that when RSO runs itself uh, or runs, we're also going to say a default booking duration. So what, how long are these appointments going to be and what are they going to be? So they're going to be scheduled. So if I'm going to go into a center, right, it's going to have a default booking uh, committed status of scheduled. Why is this important? So RSO, um, if you guys are not familiar with it, it's just basically a giant scheduling engine. And what it's going to do as part of the setup is if I have an appointment or something like that or an appointment, it's going to look at the different scheduling methods. So if I say Lucas Diaz is confirmed to go into a center uh, on Tuesday and the uh, um, booking status in this case of my resource booking is scheduled or it's something like uh, in progress, do not move it, do not touch it. So RSO could be configurable that it always optimizes based on the booking status that you have selected. So for example, if somebody hasn't confirmed I want to give that spot to somebody else. So if they have not or if they have canceled or something like that, I want to move it or so or, or, or rebook it and things like that. I can actually have RSO set that up and I can configure it to however way I want for a, me to always have an optimal schedule uh, for my for my board, right? For my resources. Questions so far? I know I'm giving you guys a lot of RSO talk here or field service lingo. Anybody want to chime in? Awesome. Let's keep on going. So as part of RSO itself, the cool part about it is that there's kind of four things that we do. Is, is number one, we set up what is our goal going to be. So I'm going to share with you guys. I set up like an um, a antibody lab optimization. So I start with identify my goal, then my scope and my schedule. So I start with my goal and I want to say, OK, I want to maximize the schedule within at working hours and maximize resource preferences. One of the things that we did is we extended the, um, or in the resource requirement entity, we put in resource preferences. So if I wanna, uh, when I'm responding, I can say, I wanna go to Mount Sinai or NYC, XYC hospital. It will actually, this optimization goal will take into account these things in order to mark it by, um, by weight per se. So I'm always going to look at my constraints is always schedule within working hours and always meet the resource preferences. Now, some objectives as well is kind of really cool because it will try to maximize my total working hours or as soon as possible. But this is all flexible and configurable, right? So I can add new constraints uh, as needed, right? So for example, I need to match. I only want to schedule some folks in New York State or in New York City and things like that, I can actually create territories that RSO will take into consideration as well. Super duper cool. The next thing here is actually knowing what the scope is. So um, one of the things that I set up here as part of the demo is being able to know, okay, I want to know what resources do I want to schedule. I, do I want to schedule 
all the, the, the hospitals or do I want to schedule a subset? So by setting up a scope, it really allows me to kind of fine tune how, um, how my resources are going to be um, scheduled, right? What is it going to be that I'm going to be creating appointments for? So I'm going to look at the schedule board here. And a cool part that they built in is that anytime that I create a scope, it will show it in a schedule board manner. And there's this little yellow um, lines here or this brown, maybe it's a beer or something. Um, but yeah, it's there's this really scope. So in here, I have it run within 24 hours. So right now it's 536. So it's going to run at 536 tomorrow and it's going to optimize all the appointments from here until 530. So I can define within RSO how much do I want it to run. So I want to know uh, maybe it's five days, maybe three days. If you have a field service scenario, then you can say I want to schedule for the whole month and always look ahead 30 days in advance. Quick question, Mr. Lucas, is RSO a separate purchase or licensing? Yes, it is. Of course yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, we're in Microsoft land, of course. Yeah, baby. <laughs> And that's yeah. not cheap. <laughs> yeah, it is It is not cheap. So uh, that's a great question. So who does it apply for is when you have a massive amount of appointments that you don't know what to do with, or if you're uh, an organization that has a lot of like Comcast, for example, when they're dealing with thousands of appointments and nobody manually can actually deal with them. This is what it's, it's used for. Okay. Then last piece here is when I actually run my schedule, um, unfortunately, Microsoft pointed my uh, my RSO instance because you also need an Azure subscription in order to set up uh, RSO. But in here, actually, let me go in here and then you can actually set up a timer in which this RSO is going to be optimizing your appointments. So the cool part about it is that this is straight out of the box with some payment. But you can see as it runs, as any of the requests happens, you only, you're going to be able to see at whether it created uh, appointments or whatnot. I actually have an example here. One of these has one. Either way. So I can't show you guys, unfortunately, the, the actual COVID app um, because of privacy or, or NDA. But basically in here, we had optimization requests and we were able to see uh, which appointments were created or research requirements uh, were taken into consideration to create bookings. Lastly, I can actually create a, a schedule saying, hey, it runs at midnight every day. It runs Monday through Friday. By the way, this control sucks, so just FYI. Uh, here because it doesn't allow you to it's basically a collision of the unified UI and the RSO but nevertheless you're able to select the times the days the time zone and things like that so what's the result of that it basically takes all my resource bookings or my research requirements and starts just creating a bunch of resource bookings that's the way that we really we're able to see or use RSO in order for us to book up to 19 million appointments within a short amount of time. And this is currently uh, predicted to take about, I think we have about 5,000 every day and to a, a final load of the entire state of uh, New York State, which is 19 million. Um, now, what's next here? What we're going to do is uh, Microsoft's actually working on rolling out this very simple uh, power app into different states like Georgia, I think New Hampshire, there's uh, a few other states and it's moving towards the, the east. So the cool part is that we took the power of the power platform, regular uh, standard out of the box entities, and we modified them to what we wanted it to do. And it was very simple. And now with using Power Platform, we can really um, hit the ground running. Any questions, any thoughts? I think that's pretty amazing and has a lot to say how the common data service has evolved. The fact that you guys can just be working off those common entities to make such a robust app. So clicks. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And the great part about it is that we also use Flow. Uh, so when we wanted to move one patient from one stage to the next, let's say that we wanted, they, there was a communication coming in and the patient said, 
hey, uh, I would like to be tested at this center. Then we have an approval and then it goes to the next stage and it creates a resource requirement here. So we created flows to go along uh, with each stage and it was super easy to configure. Um, guys, I, I can tell you that if it wasn't for the Power Platform and the way that it is right now and today, we there's absolutely no way we would have reached our goal in, in such a limited amount of time. How many business days? Uh, six days. Six days. Wait, oh. no, no, no. So it, we started on a Thursday and we went live on Wednesday. So four business days total, not counting that's, the weekend. That's wow. unbelievable. Can you, uh, question I have, uh, if, I mean, hopefully you can get other people brewing with some questions is what was maybe the most difficult thing that you had to work through? Um, whether it was an integration or whether it was one of the certain pieces, um, is there something that you could emphasize as this was not easy? Uh, yeah. So the, the simplest part is us, we're solutioneers, right? All of us, probably all uh, the ones in our call is that we want to jump to all this data and all these things is the hardest part is to think simple. The simplest result will probably work for the future, right? And easily modifiable. So when we're creating a power automate, we don't want to have all this bunch of conditions created with it because they could fail at one point and there's more to test. So the more simple and I would say unit that we are, are more atomic, I guess you can have the better. The second thing is that don't go create all this bunch of custom entities, leverage what is there. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be um, you're basically going to make your life much harder. I think Amy's raising her hand. Uh, I have a question. Um, what's what's the ugliest hack that you did as part of this? Great question. <laughs> Ron asked we me that. Do them and we made it quickly. So tell me about the ugliest hack. <laughs> This well, is your dark side. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a couple. Um, so one of the things that we had to do, we actually brought down the government cloud when we were testing this. Uh, in one of the, um, it, it was a Rocking. huge, we, we created a, a deadlock in the records because we were running RSO on itself. Right, Amazing. so it was going, and so it was going like this. So the ugliest hack is that we basically, a, as part of the resource bookings and things like that, we, we can provide views. So if you notice, we have a bunch of views and we created, um, here, I'll actually show you guys basically what it, so one of the things actually, this doesn't have it. Let me see if I have it. Basically we had the view in which we added some like less or contains equal to zero to filter some uh, okay. resource requirements. And then we actually on, on production, we had a, a, a lot of joins to kind of make sure that all these things uh, were not giving us uh, the data. I don't know, the resource requirements were not taken into consideration, but we kind of hacked it in a way. Yeah, you're like, thank Jesus for FedExML Builder, right? <laughs> yeah, and so we, we, kind of did it. Another thing that we know is that um, RSO is a good uh, product, but out in the wild, uh, right, when you actually start using it for what it needs to be, uh, they didn't consider certain things. Uh, so we actually had to go in behind uh, the scenes and fix some things. Another thing is that if you set up an, uh, a resource as an account, so right here, Let's just do that. Notice, uh, so it actually will lock it for me, the resource type. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Right, so it's tied to now an account. Or if you set it up as a facility, we actually had to write a script to actually yeah. update uh, directly because we had to, they originally set it up as uh, facilities, we had to switch it over to accounts. And that was like open heart surgery. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry. It's an amazing solution. I'm not pulling holes in it. I just wanted to know what the trick is. It was. It's really cool. Yeah, but the the what the thing that we discovered the most is our own heads were, were our most um, impediment because we had to yeah. think simple, 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 simple. How can we make this simpler? 
We have a, another question that may poke some holes. Have there been any major issues since you released the app? And if so, have you addressed them? Do you have like a full-time team supporting this uh, solution or is it now in the hands of the client with the state of New York? What does uh, this look me? like? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yep. you're back. Okay, we're back. Okay. Uh, it is yes, yes, and yes. Uh, we had some serious issues on RSO performance uh, because now we're encountering, I think the, the threshold was supposed to be 5,000 in one run, but we're going to get up to 500,000 within a few weeks uh, that we're going to have to optimize. So there's a performance issue there. And we have the entire product team on the field service side uh, working on issues constantly. And basically, we've been on ever since. Uh, so Microsoft's taking care of the care and feeding of it, partly. You froze up, uh, Lucas. Come on, teams. Don't be doing this to Mr. Lucas. Support performance. There he is. Yeah, oh. I shut off my video because I think that was cutting my bandwidth here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're back. What was it? So any other questions? Let's see. Anybody have questions? You can either raise your hand, pop them in the chat. Um, you know, maybe I'll give... Uh, what were, were you guys on? using Power Apps portals for this at all? I yes, we were. Yeah, so we had it. Uh, so it's uh, if you go to, I'll drop the link actually. Um, our test site, just if you guys want to see it, it's public, so it's no problem. We use Power Out portals for this uh, to be able to do the patient intake. Do you want to share it on your screen, Lucas? Yeah, right here. Yep. So in here, we actually use Power App portals. So if you can tell, that's the Power Apps. So I can actually go ahead and update my information and get into my intake questionnaire. So being able to uh, be updating, like, have I been exposed? What is my location? What is my current status? Things like that. Um, yeah, we use Power Portal for that. So let me see if I can. It looks so cleanly embedded into the website. Yeah. And so this is a confirmation of appointment. And then let me see if I can get in. A lot of things have moved. Um, yeah. So it, this is a test record here that I was toying around with a while ago. Ron has a fantastic question. What sort of licensing issues did you have to run into? Or were None. there? Because Microsoft was uh, there right behind you? Yeah, we had Uncle Microsoft with us. And so, <laughs> take it all. Take it all. Um, the cool part is that when you're dealing with that, this this kind of high profile thing is that no license is is unbearable and no Azure cost is unbearable either. So the portal licensing is by uh, login. It's almost like a consumption based type licensing, correct? Yeah, and so we we didn't even touch licensing. Basically, Microsoft said. Let's just do it, and then we'll figure out later, mm -hmm. um, which is the opposite of an implementation. But uh, <laughs> and so you we got didn't, it done. Yeah, we didn't have to deal with that, which was thankful. Um, and the Microsoft folks were really there to support us and and communicating with NYS as to what we needed while we created the solution. It's great. So one question I have: What did you run into any difficulties in just embedding it into the website, or is it something? Is this app something that just kind of clicks off, links off to the original website into its own portal? Yeah, it, there, there's a number of um, difficulties there. There's another thing that we have to consider is that if this site gets hacked for any way or form, right, then this actually will expose our entities. So we actually created intermediary, intermediary um, entities to capture the responses from the site. And then from that, we actually use Flow to communicate uh, with our app so that if it was hacked, we only had certain level of exposure. With regards to embedding it, I can get the details as to um, how that was done. That was with Andreas and, and the rest of the team. But they, uh, I know they, they fought really hard to make sure that it fit nicely within the NYS website. 
Yeah, I'm sure must, it's either like a lot of design gymnastics or embedding gymnastics. And I was wondering which way you have to go. It was uh, embedding uh, gymnastics okay. mostly. Gotcha. Anybody else have questions for Lucas? Got like 10 more minutes if anybody has burning questions. Yeah, and I wish I could share the app. I literally have it on my other screen here, but you know, this belongs to NYS. And I also don't want to risk sharing any PII, even if it was a test, given the sensitivity of things. But guys, I cannot stress the simplicity of using the Power Platform to create simple solutions to enable great outcomes. That is something that do not be afraid of, for example, the schedule board. Do not be afraid of looking at URS, universal resource scheduling, for example. We're seeing a lot of that in the field service world, right, to scheduling technicians and things like that. And um, being able to, to kind of bring it to reality in a 360 perspective from the tech or whoever's using the app and integrating with D360 or um, uh, D365 communicating and being able to have the, kind of this back office. Yeah. Awesome. And shameless plug for Lucas and Ludia, just how amazing you guys are to work with and just architectural masterminds. I know you have your team member Nilo on the call as well. I mean, it doesn't get better than this if you're looking for dynamics help and you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you. This is um, it's, it's awesome. This was all also pro bono. Uh, another thing that we did and, and is for the benefit of the community, right? Because we believe that if we all put our brain power to use, uh, I think we can all save the world here, right? We start locally and we move forward. So thank you guys. Thank you, Greg. Let's give him some snaps. <laughs> thank Everybody you, can go off mute. Give Lucas some snaps and his team. I can Fantastic only snap work. with my pinky. So. <laughs> Never thank learned you. how to snap. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing.